Good evening, Garden Gains, and happy first day of spring. Uh, I want to review um, three plants with you guys. Um, it's been a couple weeks, so I need to give you guys an update on something. And the first plant I want to talk about is... Dun, 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 dun. Patamba. Ooh. Another Eugenia to add to the collection. It looks so yummy. I've seen these, uh, or I've seen this video, or several people with videos, uh, um, enjoying this very ornamental, um, it has an apricot flavor from what I've been told. As it says right there, apricot flavor, Eugenia from Brazil. And this adds to, like I said, to my collection. As you all know, if you followed me, uh, I made a video on the cherry of the Rio Grande. I have Pitanga Tuba. And Groomy Chama. What else do I have that's a Eugenia? Probably should make a separate video on all my Eugenias. Um, so, can't say I can review the taste. I've never tasted this before, but I'm just glad to have it in my collection. And it's still pretty small, like I said, but I'm looking forward to this um, in the coming years. Um, like I said, I got this through Plantogram. Um, I've had good things to say about Plantogram. Um, they have like really, really good trees um, that arrive at your home. No issues that I can think of. And back to uh, the Batamba. Um, like all Eugenias, um, they're pretty hardy as far as uh, in my zone. Uh, I'm in zone 10A, if you all can believe it or not. Um, I've had discussions with people <laughs> who uh, may, might contradict that. Um, as you all know, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, my winters um, this season... Um, the lowest I've seen it, maybe 35 um, for one day, maybe another day, 37, another day, 38, 39. Not consecutively, though. So it's just like a blink of an eye, and then it starts to warm up. Um, we live in a temperate weather zone. Uh, it doesn't get too hot, and it doesn't get too cold. Um and I live not far away from the bay. Not the ocean, but the bay. So that weather helps prevent frost. Not to say that I won't get any frost in the near future, but it does help. Anyway, started uh, venturing off a bit. Um, the next, so yeah, that's my Patamba. So I'm very happy about having this again and um i will give you give you updates um as time goes on next uh, uh tree i want to talk about is this one here which i'll review in a second uh, and i've been pretty ecstatic about this tree i actually don't really get too ecstatic when it comes to oranges because here in california you kind of take it for granted a bit, maybe, uh, or at least I do. You know, you see orange trees in everyone's backyard, and, you know, if you were to see a Patamba, then, you know, that's like, whoa, like, wow. But then again, the reason why I'm, I'm ecstatic about this orange tree, because it's, it's kind of a strange uh, orange, whereas it's... Um, let me cut to the chase. Let me get to the point. <laughs> this is a Smith Red Orange. It's a semi-dwarf. Grows about 10 to 15 feet at maturity. 
and fruit matures in late winter and hold well into late spring. Now, I've read the story behind this particular orange. Now this, and it doesn't say here, but if you search it, it's actually a Valencia orange, okay? Valencia orange that has the inside red. And if you Google it, you'll see even sometimes the rind, the skin being red, kind of like a blood orange. So this is not a blood orange. This is a orange, a Valencia orange. Now, the reason why it's, it's, it's called Smith red and the backstory to this is that um, there's a late, there was a lady, but the last name of Smith, I believe that lived uh, in, I believe in Moore Park, somewhere down south in Southern California. And the story goes is that um, um, she has a Valencia orange in her backyard and she noticed that some of the oranges on the Valencia tree were red, like red rind and red like a blood orange. And the poor old lady thought that her neighbor poisoned her 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 Valencia orange. This sounds pretty funny. Um, so thinking that she ended up calling like maybe like the Farm Bureau or something like that, sent someone out, came to her house, inspected the tree, inspected the the fruit, and ultimately what they said was this was a, a sport of of um a, some sort of mutation i'm not sure how to explain it but evidently uh it just happened to be that this particular part of the orange tree had oranges that looked like blood or blood oranges um and an interesting thing is that this uh orange tree tastes just like a Valencia orange. Valencia orange, as you all know, it's one of the famous orange trees good for juicing. Um, and so, not to be mistaken, if you were to bite this uh, fruit, you're not going to have that blood orange taste. It's going to be a Valencia orange with the look of that. Now, for me, personally, I like to have trees in my backyard just odd rare maybe not so rare but you know just odd uh, conversation piece of a, of a of a fruit to talk about um, so I wanted to add this to my collection and one of the good thing is that um, that it, it's it actually likes a little bit of the cold and the more cold it gets, the more darker the skin gets, and obviously the inside too. I will upload some pictures, and obviously you guys can do your own homework and Google that yourself. Okay, this is through Four Winds Growers. This is in a um, three gallon. And it's a baby. It's still small. No, I don't see any uh, any, any new growth um, that I see. It maybe just a little bit right there and right there. No flowers, no nothing. I can't wait to taste this fruit. To show it off to you guys, you guys can appreciate, um, you know, just odd looking things. Um, I do have a blood orange. I have a moral blood orange. It took forever to fruit. Uh, I had, I think, maybe like four years, three, three and a half to almost four years in the ground. Never fruited until last season. And obviously, it probably helped that I put some good amendments um, in the soil that might have contributed to some fruit. But the thing is that about the blood orange, or at least the moral blood orange, is that it requires a lot of heat 
And like I said before, I don't have a ton of heat in my zone. It's like I said, 70s and 80s, mostly high 70s. So that being said, um, I definitely like the idea of a fruit getting dark red, blood red, the rind red. As it gets cold outside, it gets dark red. It's going to be very interesting to cut one open for you guys. So that's, I got this through Dale Hardware, Semi Dwarf Smith Red. Pretty excited, guys. I hope you guys can get this one too. And, or if you do have one, let me know. I'll be interested in watching your video. All right, next one. Looks kind of sad, but it's still alive. It's I have another Patenga tuba. Now, the reason why it looks kind of sad is that when I purchased it, um, I'm assuming, well, the seller had it in a greenhouse, more than likely. So, I put it outside in the, sh in the shade, and everything was fine. And then we had a day, I think Saturday, over the weekend, Saturday and Sundays, we had some 70s. 70s. 72 73 really nice and end up toasting it it wasn't um it wasn't ready to be put out just yet or at least kept in full shade i guess it was where i had put it um and got some morning sun and that was that was still enough to fry it a little bit but it is still green guys so what can do with do a little scratch thing? It, still green. Still alive. Just a little sad. And as you all know, I already have another one planted in the ground. I'm thinking about planting it next next to the, the one planted in the ground because two will help uh, chances of cross-pollination. And uh, obviously, uh, um, the fruit varies taste-wise from fruit to fruit. Some might taste sweeter, some more um, tangy or tart. Um, so it varies. So uh, it's good to have more than one. And we've got a good size one. They're slow growers, so we got to get something that's a good size more or less and these are precocious so they will put out some fruit just after two like three years three to four years so and got this too original price was about uh, i believe 20 bucks and it had a coupon got it for 9.99 and predominantly, I'm going to use this for um, spraying, foliar uh, spraying all my fruit trees and uh, with some, um, I have some, uh, uh, it's, I'm not sure if it's Neptune's Harvest, I can't remember, pretty much it's, it's seaweed, sea kelp, and fish emulsion all in one. And I'm going to go ahead and spray all these down. Every little bit helps to promote some growth. All right, one last thing, guys. And I'll let you guys go. This is an update of my fig cuttings. Recently set this little thing up. Heat mats. On both sides heat mats and put a little set up the uh, grow light up here and also this one as well pretty cool looking and let's take a look at the progress so far So, 
this here, <clears throat> that there is a Black Madeira KK. This here, I-258. This here is a Roberts Golden Rainbow. Forgot to mention that to you guys. I ended up purchasing through FigBid a one decently sized um, fig cutting. And um, I ended up cutting it in two. Um, it was just enough to have two cuttings. And I plant, I put this one here as well. And the other one, I actually grafted that one onto a, uh, Peter's honey, which is outside. Now it didn't have the best looking buds. This one here has roots. I've seen roots here. So I can say I have one, but I'm not out of the woods yet. So I'm still waiting for this to get more roots and then transferring it to a cup or something like that this is all coco core this here is a black madeira kk as well and then this here it's a lot of things i need to tell you uh, up to update you guys that one there i believe is a adriatic I think the tree, this is a backstory to this. Um, it's this gentleman that um, he's about 80 years old. He has a very old um, fig tree. And I made a video about this um, thinking maybe it was a desert king. And maybe it could, it could be a desert king or maybe it'd be an Adriatic. I'll let you guys decide on that. But I'll, I'll make another video on that. Um, essentially, I made a bunch of cuttings from this tree. This particular tree here was planted at this uh, uh, guy's house uh, back in 1976. So just over 40 years old, a little, little over 40 years old tree. And this is the one that I Every year, I usually get figs from that. Um, I'll make, like I said, I'll make another video on that. And these are another cuttings from that particular tree. And so over here as well, these are all cuttings from that particular tree. All right, guys, with that said, cross my fingers that these will not die on me with that said garden gains happy spring and i look forward to making more videos maybe today maybe tomorrow excuse me maybe the day after so don't forget about me please subscribe like the video click the bell notification bell for future videos guys i really appreciate you guys um you know i'm starting out this channel and and um i really like talking about all types of fruits figs um tropicals subtropicals so all right guys garden gains take care i'll stop stop blabbing take care